everyone, good morning. So today we're gonna to do the Galileo's Kinematics Lab. Now I know that in the materials, it says to use either your smartphone or a stopwatch. I'm actually gonna use what's called a photo gate today. So I will um, show you, kind of bring you a little closer, show you what I mean by what a photo gate is. Um, it's a very good tool to use in physics labs. And so it's good to kind of get used to seeing it and using it so you can use it in lab write ups in the future. So let's get started. This is a photo gate, and this is what I'm gonna be using today for my timing device. So basically, um, this thing is hooked up to these two little gates right here, this one right here, and then this one right here. Um, when the laser's broken in between these two little arms right here, the timer will start there, and then when the marble rolls down and then breaks the laser down here, then the timer will stop. So it's just an easier way to measure time, especially because I'm by myself, doing this lab by myself. <laughs> so it's a little bit more accurate for me to do. Now, another way that you can use this photo gate is you can put the gate... Um, down just at the bottom and then use what's called um, the eclipse time meaning like the amount of time that the laser is broken so if you know that eclipse time and you know how wide your object is so say like a marble you can get the average velocity as that object is going down at the end of the ramp right here but for the, the purpose of this lab I want the time from the initial velocity of zero to the final velocity down here Okay, so the way that this ramp is set up, um, I have the meter sticks resting on these textbooks at 90 centimeters, and the textbooks themselves are 14 centimeters high. Um, I am first going to let the marble go at 80 centimeters right here, so that will be our first displacement, and then um, we'll get six different times for that. You guys will take an average, and then we'll do three other displacements and we'll do the same thing six different times for those three displacements, take the average for each. Um, and so here what we're looking for is we're looking for the relationship between displacement and time when we have a constant acceleration. All right, so for part B, we are finding the relationship between the angle of the incline and the rate of acceleration. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to um, find the height of this ramp and we'll put it in basically height over length in our lab because we know that the angle is going to be proportional to the height over the length because we know that the sine of the angle is equal to opposite over hypotenuse, opposite being the height of this ramp, and then the hypotenuse being the length of the ramp. So that's why you're doing that. Um, well, that's just kind of filling in for the angle because we're not going to actually measure the angle here. Now, the other thing we need to do is um, get a displacement. So I'm going to be rolling this marble down from 80 centimeters every single time, which is just 0.8 meters. Uh, and then again, just like we did before, I will get six times for this height here, and then um, you will average that, square that. Also, you'll see that in the we have a column for t average squared, and then do the rest of the math that's that are in those columns. Um, so first and foremost, the first height of this ramp, I want to measure it, um, and it looks to me to be about twenty centimeters. So that's going to be our first height. And then I'm just going to take these books away one at a time um, and I'll measure a new height, put it in, the, in my column, get six times for that, so on and so forth. Okay, so let's do it.
So for part C of this lab, it's probably the hardest part of the lab, um, getting data wise. Uh, we're going to explore the relationship between speed, incline, and height. So the way that we're going to do this is, um, I mean, if you follow the directions, it basically just says with the top of the ramp at about a height of 0.25 meters. And when we're talking about height here, I'm measuring from the table to the underside of the meter stick. Um, and that will give us the height of this triangle. Um, and so it's about 0.25 meters. So I have it tw at 25 centimeters right there. And then what we want to do is we want to find, it says measure the length of the ramp for that point P to be the bottom of the ramp. Now point P has to be 10 centimeters off the table. So what, what I'm doing here is I am finding the 10 centimeters on my meter stick and then I want the point where the top of the ramp is 10 centimeters off the table. So the point that's 10 centimeters off the table looks to me to be about uh, 37.5 centimeters. So that's going to be where my point P is uh, at 37.5 centimeters right here from the end of the ramp. And so that will be my distance D. So the way that you fill out this table for the first part is that our height in meters is 0.25. Our distance or displacement um, in meters is 0.375 because 37.5 centimeters. So that will be our displacement down the ramp. Now I'll get six times for this. And then after that, we're gonna do this three more times, but we're gonna change the height and therefore the location of point P will change every single time because we still want it to be 10 centimeters off the table. All right, so really what we're seeing here is does the final velocity change when we are not actually changing the height that that uh, marble is being let, um, the, that the marble's off the table where it's being let go from? Um, the results of this are very interesting, I think. And of course, it will make uh, much more sense and be much easier when we talk about energy later this year. Um, but I want you to see the relationship of that right now. So let's do this part C. Okay, so I want to talk about error really fast because this is going to be part of your lab. Now, I just want you to sh see what happens when I roll this marble down j the crack of the two meter sticks compared to when it actually rolls on top of the meter stick because sometimes these are a little bent, so sometimes it like comes off the meter stick. Um, so if it rolls down the crack, ah, thinking maybe I would be able to catch it. That's fine. But do you see how fast it goes? And then if it kind of gets on top of the meter stick, let's see if I can actually do this. Do you see how it kind of went faster? So these cracks right here, they kind of um, give some friction, I feel like, to the marble. So it makes it roll a little bit slower. So that's part of the thing that you can talk about in your, um, your error portion. 
And another thing that you can talk about in your error portion is basically just the fact that this marble is rolling. Now you guys don't really know that much about rolling yet. We're gonna learn about that later this year, but things have what's called a rotational inertia. So basically things that have mass more concentrated on the outside, um, that things that roll, I mean, when the mass is concentrated on the outside, more energy is going into actually rolling that object. So, um, of course, these are marbles, so they are solid through and through, so they have a lower rotational inertia than some things do, but um, they still have rotational inertia, meaning some of the energy that's given from, well, really from gravitational potential energy, but again, you guys don't know that much about that yet, um, some of that energy is going into rolling this marble, not just, so there's different kinds of uh, motion, there's rotational motion and translational, which just means from one place to the next. So the marble sliding down the ramp is translational motion. The marble rolling is rotational motion. So you are losing some of that energy to rotational motion here, which is why the data is not completely perfect. Now, if we had a frictionless ramp and we had an object that didn't roll, then the data would be more perfect. But since some of that energy is going into rolling, you're going to lose some of the energy and the velocity is going to be uh it's going to be lower at the bottom of the ramp than we really think it is if we're not taking into account rotational motion so that is something that you might want to discuss in your conclusion portion when you talk about error okay everyone so you have all the data and now you are going to finish filling out your tables do your math answer your questions make your graphs if i ask you to make a graph um, and I hope this was helpful. And uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to email me. I am always around, <laughs> always able to answer your emails. Um, and I hope you enjoyed doing Galileo's Kinematics Lab with me.